I have today one of our youth leaders, Babu C. Nappa uh, from Karnataka. And uh, uh, without any ado, I would like Babu to take the stage on and speak. And Babu, uh, could you please share your early life briefly uh, for our viewers and everyone to know, because you are an inspiration to all of us. So yes, over to you. So I am Babu Sinapa. I was I am currently 21 years old. I was a victim to HIV at the age of sorry by birth, and uh, I lost my father at the age of four and my mother at the age of seven, and I was brought to a care home in Bangalore, which is called Sneha Care Home, where I rebuilt my childhood grew up to be an adolescent and I was transferred to a place called Sneha Gram, the second phase of Sneha Care Home. In Sneha Gram, I was uh, trained in vocational training skills, different skills like uh, learning basic English, uh, interpersonal skills, life skills, so learning important things. And now I am a mentor in I Am Possible Fellowship Program. So I mentor three fellows under me and I'm also a teacher. I teach uh, students psychology and uh, environment science. So that's a little bit about me, a small bio. Okay. Uh, do you have any other siblings or uh, any brothers or sisters or? Uh... Yes, I, I have my brother, elder brother and elder sister who are not infected. So, yes, okay, I have so an elder sister and an elder brother. Okay, okay. Uh, and how, how did you come to Sneha Care Home? Like, uh, who brought you here or how did you hear about it? Because you came at a very young age here, is it? Yeah, so uh, I was brought to, through a social worker. So when we had gone to hospital just uh, for the tests and other things, they got to know that I was an orphan. I mean, I had no father and mother. So at that time, there was a lady who said, um, there is an hostel who actually take care of these sort of children. Would you like to try? So my uncles, to get rid of me, so gave, gave the best choice, said, okay, uh, we can try the best. So they started running around because if they had to keep me, they had to feed me and they have to literally take care of me, being the brothers and sisters of my father or mother. So we had to roam around for about uh, three months. And uh, yeah, luckily I was put into Sneha Care Home after two months of uh, searching and going around different hostels. And it was mainly through a social worker who was working in the ART center. Okay. And, and your uh, elder brother, uh, sister and brother, they stayed with your uncles or somebody? They were living with them? Yes, my brother was staying with my uncle for some time and my sister was uh, staying with my grandmother. Okay. Uh, Babu, any specific, if, if you want to share any specific bitter as well as a sweet memory you would like to share or more than one memory is this? Of my life or? Of your life, life? Of, your, of yours, till now. It means something which you remember very much, yes. So the most hurting uh, experience that I still remember is, of course, for everyone that would be, is my death of my mother. When I lost her, it was the most uh, painful moment. And that, uh, that was not very painful till the next painful event came into my life of uh, discrimination, where my uncles and aunts got to know that I was uh, infected with uh, HIV. And they started, uh, you know, moving me away from or uh, abandoning me separately, putting me in a different place, isolating me with uh, different food and uh, cups and uh, water. So you name it, and they did it. So that's uh, they did so hard where it was hurting that they started speaking so rude about my mother and father. 
So they used to name it like if she and he were uh, in the right forms and the right uh, duties, it, they would, he wouldn't have got uh, infection. You know what I mean? So they literally uh, meant that my mother or father had many more relationships. So I still can't forget that words which they had spoken among themselves. So I know I was very young, but I still know that I can, I would, I was able to understand those words. There was isolation with a lot of uh, discrimination. And the most sweetest memory I still remember is after, you know, I was put into on os- to snack around a few lies where the social worker told me that, told the fathers that I had no one, that their fathers show compassion and take me without any fees. So they expected that fathers might chat. So they told lies. After four years, after literally four years, that was at the age of 12, I got to meet back my grandmother and grandfather. So that is one of the most sweetest memory. And the other great memory I still remember is when I first went to Australia to, and, uh, to the International AIDS Conference to present a paper. So that was my second sweetest memory. And then memories added on where I started representing India in uh, few major countries, about eight countries, and then, yeah, that's for sweet memories. Yes, you, you have come a long way, Babu, and uh, you have experienced that the stigma at such an early age. What do you think is, are things better today, or is there still that stigma and discrimination and so many myths around HIV uh, today? How, how are things today? It means not uh, not for you, but generally. Certainly, with a lot of technology and awareness, many people have uh, certainly changed, and they have learned new things, and they've understood that HIV is not as dangerous as coronavirus. So we need not isolate them like COVID. But when you talk, which is better, corona or HIV, people still prefer corona. Because the discrimination that has come from ages and the belief and the myths that anyone who has HIV, it has come through the wrong modes. They don't, if I say I was born with HIV, people don't believe it. They might believe me when I was six years or 10 years, but when I'm 25 years and I say I was infected the same way and I show them proofs, they still don't believe. So the way of looking of the disease has not changed much. You let it be educated or uneducated, they still see the same manner. Uh, to give a quick example, I had met few of the best uh, students some from one of the best universities. And you know, they asked me, uh, are you all safe and uh, does this virus spread? And I was like quickly shocked, like they're all masters, they have, zero idea about HIV and they have the same fear of everyone. So I like was saying that no, even though you're educated, the fear of HIV and the wrong belief hasn't changed. Yes. And so, so a lot has to be done. I think in, uh, in, in, all, in all populations, in communities and in general population, I agree with you totally, Babu. Babu, you are a great athlete. Yeah. And what made you choose the medium of sports to spread the message of hope, hope in children and adolescents living with HIV and message of hope to others also? I, you are a great runner and you just share something about that. And what made you choose sports to, to help others? So I'm not very sure how this, yeah, I'm not very sure how this instinct came into my life, but uh, I think at the age of nine, I started running the small race that was in champion in me in 2009. And that's when my coach, he just selected me and said, Dada, you are a very good runner. I literally didn't believe that. So, but the next, after three months, there was a chance to run two kilometer marathon. It was a two kilometer marathon and whoever runs first used to get, uh, I think it was 250 rupees or 500 rupees of the cash price. So I was so excited and I ran the fastest, but I literally came the last. I didn't get a uh, first prize or anything. So there actually came the foundation of running into my life. And I think this instinct is there within me. 
And but I started seriously training from the age of ten, where I started slowly running. And uh, you don't know how. Uh, sorry, I don't know how I transformed so fast that I became from the slowest to the fastest. So in the group, I literally became the fastest, and I started taking up the uh, role. And people started looking me as the role model. And then I started getting a lot of chances to be the leader of the group. So where I started showing them how to do strengthening, exercises, running, so different things I started taking up. So as the moment I started taking up, people saw me as a different person. Where I am more healthier, stronger, confident than anyone else. So then I understood that running is one of the reason or the main reason why I'm so healthy, why I'm so strong. So I decided to take up running. and you know the running took me a long way it has uh, taken me few countries i have represented uh, india in many countries as i told you earlier so that's where i decided that running is a place where many people come and there is no discrimination in running no matter you're disabled cancer or hiv they see you still as the same person so there i decided that let me spread the message through running so that is when i <clears throat> started sharing my stories to people explained about running and then started promoting running to different ngos and uh, yeah currently we are also helping few ngos to start running and uh, spread the message so that you are no less to anyone so it is difficult uh, to tell somebody that you are not less to anybody unless you prove it to them so how you prove to them is one way is running so you say make them run and say that you see you can compete the same manner and the same speed of the other students or other people so you know less that's when people believe so i stopped talking too much and started doing so much so the people started believing and that is how i took this as message of hope great so uh, now are you coaching children uh, to run as you were coached sometime yes. by others so are you coaching children uh, and and also encouraging i coach uh, Yeah, I coach the children in Snagram. There are about forty-five uh, students currently. I had been coaching for last four years, different groups of students. Now started the coaching in Kolar. That's another district in Karnataka. Thumkur again another district. Mangalore another place. So all these institution-based children, where there are children already about fifty, sixty, seventy infected children. so we focus there and start uh, training the children in this uh, places so i have been the lead person so far and i'm trying to promote some of the young students to start training these children so when i move on somebody takes on that's great and i think sports teaches you or perhaps running as you saw in your own case that never give up and i think that's the message never give up in life and uh, and you have proved it like you did not get yeah. uh, the first time you ran second time you ran you did not get any prize or but but and then to what height you rose so i think uh, uh, that is uh, that is superb that is really very very inspiring uh and babu what is your message for the 24th international aids conference you have been to other uh, aids conferences before as well uh, what is your message for this conference i always have the same message from the day i started running you give an equal opportunity to every child and i promise they will prove that what you think of hiv infected is wrong they will show that we can transform the world but giving an opportunity is our duty so give an opportunity to the hiv infected or affected and i promise they will match your expectation so giving an opportunity will change many Dark lives. That's my I, thank you very much, Babu, and uh, hope to meet you personally in Montreal. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Shubha. Thank you.